In yesterday's episode, we had just arrived at Zion. After traveling with the Happy Trails caravan for two weeks, we descended down a ravine to arrive at Zion only to be massacred by the savage tribe called the White Legs. Every member of our company lies dead, and we have no way out. Our only option is to delve deeper into Zion to see if we can find a way back to the Mojave. As we cross a rickety bridge, we get attacked by another white leg tribal from across the ravine. Only this time, before we can kill him, he is slain by what at first appears to be another tribal. But upon closer inspection, his legs are not quite as white as the man who was shooting at us. And he seems at least neutral. As we get closer, he addresses us. Hoi, white legs don't leave survivors often. You're some kind of lucky, let me tell you. You came from outside, didn't you? from the civilized lands. Wow, Joshua will want to hear about this. If we tell this guy to go away, we don't have time for him. He simply tells us to go to his camp. La, I meant no offense. If you won't talk to me, talk to Joshua Graham. He set our camp on the Eastern Virgin. Otherwise, we can ask him, who's this Joshua he was talking about? Joshua Graham. He leads our tribe. Thanks to him, the dead horses are strong and safe from our enemies. He'll want to talk to anyone coming up from Southways. Guess that means just you now. Come, I can take you to him. He said we came from the civilized lands. What do you mean by that? I mean the lands beyond the valley. The place where the cities never fell. Where people don't live in tribes and forage just to survive. Joshua keeps saying it isn't paradise out there. But how can it not be, compared to this? Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Joshua will want to know about you. Please, go to our camp on the Eastern Virgin. Tell him how you came to be here. Well, my friend, you've got a funny idea about what the Mojave is like, but uh, yeah, I'll go see your boss. Good sists. Maybe while you're there, you can tell me about where you came from, yeah? With that, Follows Chuck joins our company as a companion. Follows Chalk deserves his own dedicated video, which I'll be publishing later. But for right now, I really want to focus on Joshua Graham. We can talk with Follows Chalk a little bit more about what happened here, and ask him, who were those tribals who attacked us? White legs. Nasty bunch. They've been raiding deeper into Zion ever since New Canaan was wiped out. Whoa, wait, wait. New Canaan was wiped out? How? That's what Joshua said. White legs came down from Great Salt Lake in force, fell on New Canaan before they could mount a defense. Joshua found some of the survivors led by a man named Daniel. Most of them have fled the valley, but Daniel stayed on with the Sorrows tribe. He and Joshua have been arguing over whether to stand and fight the White Legs, or take the Sorrows and the Dead Horses out of the valley. Oh, the Happy Trails caravan will not be pleased to hear that. Where did the White Legs come from? That's the weird part. Normally, the White Legs keep to the Great Salt Lake. I don't know what brought them down this far south. Well, after everything we heard from Stella and Jed Masterton, I'm thinking that the White Legs were emboldened by the success of the Legion and the struggles of the NCR. Remember, the NCR used to patrol the roads, but they no longer can because they're stuck in the Mojave fighting the Legion. Follows Chalk, why is it that you and your tribe fight the White Legs? Well, because they're our enemies. What else would we do? They take our land, they kill our scouts, they poach our hunting grounds. You mentioned that Joshua Graham was your leader. I've heard his name, but I don't know much about him. Can you tell me more about Joshua Graham? He's been the chief of our tribe since he came back to the valley. He went off to the civilized world years ago to fight a war. That didn't go well. What happened to him? You see his face. You'll understand. Well, that doesn't really help me now, does it? The only recent war I know about was when Caesar's Legion attacked Hoover Dam. Is that where Joshua Graham fought? I don't know. He doesn't talk about it much. Maybe. But how can two civilized tribes fight over something as small as a dam? Small? Have you ever seen the Hoover Dam? It's bigger than some of these mountains. Ha! <laughs> really? That's... my gods. Must be some mighty civilized folks who built that. 
Yeah, well, you'd be surprised what civilized tribes will fight over. <laughs> now, you sound like Joshua. He always tells me that tribal life is better. That I should stay here and forget the outside world. Well, tell me more about your tribe. We came up in the land of the dead horse. Though, why the back when folks called it that, I got no hint. We raided. We fought. We lost. Our enemies drove us back into Zion, and we would have died if it hadn't been for Joshua. Joshua and his Kaisar. There's a place in Utah called Dead Horse Point. It overlooks the Colorado River, and many of us would recognize it as the setting of a pivotal scene in the 1991 film Thelma and Louise. Dead Horse Point has a beautiful overlook of the Colorado River. Now wait a minute, follows Chuck. You said Joshua and his Caesar. What's this about Caesar? When Joshua first came to us, he was servant to a man he called Kaisar. He led his master's armies, and we were ready to follow him into war. Then he lost his master's army to a tribe called Ensiar, the Sunset People. When he returned, he was as you saw him, burned, broken, but changed. He led us away from Kaisar, led us to our own destiny in Zion. Oh, so you planned on joining the Legion, but Joshua changed your mind. Well, I'm glad about that. What else did Joshua do for your tribe? If it wasn't for Joshua, the dead horses would still be the whipping boys of the Zion Valley. He taught us how to hold our territory, to protect ourselves. He guided us away from Kaisar and showed us how Kaisar would have destroyed us. Do you remember anything about Joshua Graham before he became your leader? Only a little. I was very young. He was... different. Prouder, yes, but harder, crueler, more driven. Really, I was terrified of him. We all were. When he came back, I almost didn't believe he was the same man. He was humbler. He wanted to protect, not destroy. All right, so we're starting to get a better picture of Joshua Graham. When we first met Jed, he told us not to talk about the man because the new Canaanites were ashamed of him. But the new Canaanites are gone. New Canaan was wiped out by the White Legs. Because Joshua Graham led Caesar's armies at Hoover Dam and because he lost that battle, Caesar covered him in pitch, set him on fire, and threw him into the Grand Canyon. But somehow he survived, and that experience turned him into a different man. From this exchange with Follows Chalk, it sounds like he might have become a better man. Maybe this experience humbled him. It certainly caused him to turn the dead horses away from Caesar. I'm glad to see that a tribe has maintained its cultural identity instead of being absorbed into the Legion. Now that we have Follows Chalk as a companion, we have to find our way to the dead horse camp to meet and talk with Joshua Graham. This is a rather long journey that takes us across the entire southern border of Zion. We follow the road across the bridge and up a hill past the spine where the road turns and goes southeast into the mountains. But to find the camp, we need to hop into the river and follow the river east until we reach the Dead Horses camp. Along the way, Follows Chalk tells us about one of the unique loot features of Zion. Hold up. See that log over there? Take a closer look. There might be some good stuff tucked in there. With dead money, we could loot air vents, which sometimes had stashes of goods. With honest hearts, we find these hollowed out logs, which tend to have stashes of loot as well. Only these logs most often have food. This is great to know if we're short on stim packs and don't have a lot of ways to heal ourselves. Otherwise, these logs may be less than useful. As we follow the path, we run into one of the new beasts we have to kill in this DLC. Freeze. Don't move a muscle. Yao Guai. Whew, that was some kind of lucky. Guess that one was all full of gecko, eh? <laughs> Don't get used to it, though. Yao Guai are plenty mean as a rule. And he's right, there are plenty of angry Yao Guai. In fact, there's a challenge, which you can complete by killing 10 Yao Guai. This challenge is very easy to complete. By the time we finish exploring Zion, we will have killed dozens of Yao Guai. Once we reach Highway 9, we can follow it south towards the camp. 
Follow the old road south. Nearly there. Despite spending so many years in civilized lands, Joshua Graham is not afraid to stick his enemies' heads on pikes. You see the dead sentries? Shamans say our enemies' souls are trapped in them. But Joshua says it shows we're serious about fighting white legs. Perhaps something he picked up from the Legion, or possibly something he taught the Legion to do. Regardless, in this primal place, where savage tribes vie for land and resources, it just may be an appropriate warning sign. I got sidetracked while exploring Zion, and by the time I was ready to head towards the Dead Horses camp, it was growing dark. Following the road south, we come upon the Zion Valley Welcome Booth. This was used by park rangers before the war, and we still find some of their belongings stored inside. We find some chems and first aid, some ammunition, and a park ranger hat. From this point, we stop following the road and go down the hill to the river. Down this path to the north. Hope you don't mind getting wet. This is the Virgin River and the gateway to the Dead Horses camp. These paintings show the Dead Horses' victories against other tribes. Lots more of them since Joshua came to us. The entrance is covered with a bunch of paintings. In this large painting, we see Joshua Graham, the burned man, wrapped in bandages to the left. His arm stretches to the right and it's holding a gun. Beneath his hand are four faces, probably the faces of other dead horse tribals. To the right we find the slain bodies of the white legs or other enemies of the dead horses, all presumably shot by Joshua Graham. Nearly there now. Watch out for traps in the water. Got to keep the white legs out somehow, eh? In the water we find a few bear traps. And what's this? Fish! Well, looks like freshwater fish somehow survived the apocalypse here in Zion National Park. Cass would be shocked to see these alive and not mounted on a wall, singing. Here we are. Joshua's just ahead there, in the angel cave. We find the main camp of the dead legs right on the shore. They've got a big gecko on a spit, and they sleep on presumably Yao Guai hide mats beneath some lean-tos made from scrap lumber. But to find their leader, we need to head south into Angel Cave. Inside the cave, we see more dead horse beds. And as we step inside, we get approached by a dead horse member. Hoi. Auslander Zuka Joshua Graham? Ah, uh, what? Show respect, Auslander. Joshua Graham, greatest war chief. Okay, well, I think I get the gist of what she's trying to say. Don't worry, I will be respectful, I promise. There is a slight incline to the northwest. Following the torches around the corner, we at last come to a large room. Stalactites covering the ceiling. Seated at a table, surrounded by painted Brahmin skulls, reloading a stack of pistols, we find the burned, bandaged, but breathing body of Joshua Graham. We should have given you a better welcome on your first visit to Zion. But from what I hear, the White Legs beat us to it. White Legs seem to be the only visitors we have these days. And I wouldn't have expected anyone from the Mojave to come looking for us. And you're a courier, no less. Not the one I was expecting, but I suppose he wouldn't have come with a caravan. I don't know if you were close to the other members of your group, but you have my sympathy. I pray for the safety of all good people who come to Zion, even Gentiles. But we can't expect God to do all the work. Pray? God? What are you talking about? I am a new Canaanite. We believe we are the heirs of a spiritual tradition, given to our ancestors thousands of years ago. We have made and kept covenants with our Lord God to honor his laws. In exchange, we are promised eternal salvation after this life. A day will come when our Lord returns to judge us all. Until then, we must honor his laws and start others along the path of salvation if we can. That's why we trade with others and work the tribes. We have more than food and medicine to offer. Good news is our most valuable commodity. We can respond with skepticism and say, Huh, if you say so. Whether there is a god or not, his existence doesn't depend on what you believe or what I say. There is much to be skeptical of in this world, so it no longer surprises me to learn how many people don't really believe in anything. 
but I believe that our Lord was made flesh as Jesus Christ and died to redeem me, and you, and the sorrows, even the white legs, everyone. Or we can respond with mockery and say, Ha <laughs> ha! Wait, you don't actually believe that, do you? I know it may be hard for you to accept or even to understand. In my heart, I believe that though I am a sinner, I have been saved. And I believe there is something beyond this rock, and this air, and this water around us. Something more that is waiting for us. I have been baptized twice. Once in water, once in flame. I will carry the fire of the Holy Spirit inside until I stand before my Lord for judgment. Or we can respond with respect and say, Sounds like a good deal. In a world filled with misery and uncertainty, it is a great comfort to know that, in the end, there is light in the darkness. Every day we move closer to our judgment. We must do our best to walk in the footsteps of our Lord and teach others how to do the same. For many of us, the road is a difficult one, but the path is always there for us to follow, no matter how many times we may fall. Do you ever fall, Joshua? Every day. Some days are harder than others. How do you know so much about what happened to me and my caravan? The dead horses are capable scouts. Nothing passes into or out of Zion without my hearing of it. Well, I came here with the Happy Trails Caravan Company to make contact with the new Canaanites. Happy Trails. I remember. They were good friends. I have bad news for your employers. New Canaan was destroyed, its citizens scattered. All because of the White Legs. And Caesar, of course. The White Legs want to join the Legion. Caesar's rite of passage is the destruction of the New Canaanites, almost assuredly because of me. The good news is that we can help you find your way back. Daniel, one of the other New Canaanites, has made many maps of the region. The bad news is that we can't help you right now, not with everything that's going on. All right, well, if you can't help me, how do I get out of here? Even though you made your way in, there's no easy way back. Without a map, you'll die in the wilderness. Daniel, one of our missionaries, can help you. But you've caught us at an inconvenient time. We're under continual threat from the White Legs. We can respond with violence and impatience and say, How about I go find dear Daniel and shake the information out of him? There are many reasons why that would be a bad idea. I will illuminate three. First, do not believe that because Daniel is a missionary, he is incapable of or unwilling to defend himself. Second, if you harm Daniel or any of the sorrows or dead horses, I will find you. Make no mistake. God willing, you will not leave this valley. Lastly, waging war against good people is bad for the soul. This may not seem important to you now, but it's the most important thing I've said. Or we can respond with indifference and say, Don't try to get me to help you. I'm not interested. There are only so many ways you could have entered Zion from the south. You descended by routes that you cannot safely ascend to return to the Mojave. I'm not telling you this as a trick. Whether you want to help us or not, you can't get back without Daniel's assistance. I'm sure he'll be willing to assist you, but we have other responsibilities at the moment. But looks like if we want to find a way out of this place, we have got to play ball. Don't worry, Joshua. I'm not going to leave without offering to help. What can I do? You're a good neighbor to us. We all go through periods of darkness. In such times, we can turn to the Lord, but it's good to have friends. Daniel and I need pre-war tools to help us navigate beyond Zion. Should we need to evacuate, these instruments will be vital to us. Normally, we would have some of the dead horses or sorrows look for them, but many pre-war buildings in the valley are taboo. They won't go inside. Ha! Huh. 
So he wants us to scavenge some tools from Zion, but neither the dead horses nor Daniel's sorrows can do it because they think pre-war buildings are taboo. What do you mean taboo, Joshua? The sorrows believe in a spirit that lives in the caves. Say the spirit punished them once for trespassing. They put special marks around the cave entrances to keep people out. It doesn't work on the white legs, of course, but the dead horses are spooked. Well, why can't you or Daniel go get the tools? We are responsible for leading and protecting the sorrows and dead horses. They are smart people, but not as worldly as you or I. I am preparing the dead horses for war, and Daniel is preparing the sorrows for other things. Well, sorry, buddy, but I'm not going to help you on your scavenger hunt. The choice is yours, of course, but you're not going to find a way back to the Mojave without our help. In which case, we don't get what we want, so our only option really is to say, All right, Joshua, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Follows Chalk can help you find your way around the valley. He's inexperienced, but he knows enough of our language to ignore the taboos about pre-war buildings. With that, we get the quest Tourist Trap, and we need to head out to find some tools. But we're here to learn more about Joshua Graham and his story. Instead of going right to the quest, we can go back to ask him more questions. Joshua, you mentioned something about how you were expecting another courier. Care to elaborate? Caesar would never admit this openly, but he knows that I'm alive. I've killed enough of his frumentari and assassins that have come looking. I've heard one of them travels the Mojave as a courier. Most of Caesar's agents meet a fitting end in NCR territory, but maybe this one survived. Now, if we've killed Caesar in our gameplay, we have an option here to tell Joshua that Caesar is dead. I have to admit, it's hard to believe that even after all he did to me, all he tried to do to find and erase me from this world, he went first. No doubt this will be good for the Mojave. I can only hope Arizona and the tribes don't suffer as the Legion falls apart around them. You don't think Lanius can lead the Legion? I think only Caesar can lead the Legion. I've never met anyone who could take his place. I couldn't. I never had a mind for logistics. I don't know Lanius, but from what I've heard, he has no interest in leading anyone, unless it's in battle. No. The Legion dies with Caesar. What follows now are just the last steps of a man who does not yet realize that he's walking dead. Don't worry. The Mojave won't suffer because of this. I'll make sure the Legion has very little to go home with. Hmm. Good. You're doing God's work, whether you believe it or not. Hmm, yes, well, we'll see. The Lord shall reveal all things in good time. So, nice guns you got there. In the Great Basin and Colorado Plateau, all tribes are known for a specific weapon. White Legs are known for their big submachine guns, storm drums. They broke into an armory near Spanish Fork and have been using them for years. Of course, the dead horses have their wooden war clubs, and even the sorrows have their Yao Guai gauntlets. This type of 45 automatic pistol was designed by one of my tribe almost 400 years ago. Learning its use is a new Canaanite rite of passage. So you run the show around here, huh? I wouldn't say that. I am the acting war chief for the Dead Horses. They look up to me for such matters, but I only have the authority they give me. Daniel is the spiritual leader and main link of the new Canaanites to the Sorrows. He's up in the Narrows right now. Look, Joshua, you and I spent most of our time in civilized lands, the Mojave. What's going on with all these tribes? A great deal. There are three, make that four, tribes here in Zion. You've already met the White Legs on the way in. In this camp, you'll find dead horses. In the Narrows, the Sorrows. And finally, there's Daniel and myself. We're New Canaanites. Yeah, about that. Why exactly did the White Legs attack my caravan? We never did anything to them. They attack everyone who isn't a White Leg, especially caravans. They don't know how to survive on their own, so they have to raid. But as for why they are here, they are trying to wipe us out. All of us. 
They want to join Caesar's legion, and they can only prove their worth by destroying the new Canaanites and everyone we shelter. They want to join Caesar. Yeah, I bet they don't know that tribes disappear after they join Caesar. But these tribes, do they speak our language? Most don't. It's been hundreds of years since the war. They've developed their own languages. Take the dead horses. We think they were originally refugees from a place called Rez, east of the Grand Canyon. They speak a combination of Rez and a language spoken by travelers who were visiting Rez when the bombs fell. Over time, the two languages blended. I was a translator years ago, but it's hard to keep up with all of the tribal variations. We don't know what he means by Rez here. In the cancelled game Van Buren, there was a place called The Reservation, which was directly east of the Grand Canyon. The Reservation was the new name of the Los Alamos Nuclear Testing Facility in the Rocky Hills of northern New Mexico. If true, this means that the dead horses are descended from the members of the U.S. Army who inhabited that testing facility the day the bombs dropped. Or perhaps Res stands for one of the many Native American reservations in the area. Perhaps the dead horses descended from Native Americans. Possibly the Hopi or the Navajo, both of which have reservations east of the Grand Canyon. So does this valley belong to the dead horses? The valley belongs to God, but no. The dead horses live at Dead Horse Point, up the Colorado River. They came here because I asked them to. Before I returned to the fold, I visited them years earlier. I looked much different then, but I left an impression on them. I taught them how to hunt more efficiently, how to maintain their weapons and pre-war equipment. When I returned, they showed their appreciation. I've seen a lot of white legs, and I've seen some dead horse tribal members, but why haven't I seen any sorrows in the valley yet? The sorrows have many skilled hunters among them, but no warriors. They have not had to deal with war or raiders for decades. Even though they can hunt a full-grown Yaogwai, they don't know how to deal with the white legs. That's why we're here. Are the new Canaanites really a tribe? We wear more clothing than them and understand more about technology. But we're still a tribe, a linked family of families. The Boneyard, Phoenix, New Vegas, they're just places, metal and stone. New Canaan dies, but the tribe lives on. When the walls come tumbling down, when you lose everything you have, you always have family. And your family always has tribe. We've learned that the leader of the White Legs is a tribal named Salt Upon Wounds. He is a merciless tribal leader who even salts the land of the people he conquers to make sure that no living thing can ever grow in their land again. Joshua, what do you know about Salt Upon Wounds? He's a butcher. Believe me, I know the godless fire that burns in his heart. I've been burned by it myself. He's not the kind to let his subordinates do all the killing. No, he likes to have a hand in it that spear of his. He's fashioned himself an abomination before the eyes of the Lord. I'm happy to serve as an instrument of divine justice. If we try to ask him details about his personal life, he refuses. He wants us to work more closely with Daniel first. But later in the game, after we've proven to be useful, Joshua Graham opens up and we can ask him personal details. Hey, do you mind if I ask you some personal questions? It's not something I enjoy but I pray to God that someone may learn from my mistakes. What would you like to know? Were you always with the New Canaanites? I was born in Ogden, what people came to call New Canaan. Things were more peaceful when I was growing up. When I was a young man, I went out into the world to do missionary work, as all New Canaanites do. I traveled along the Long 15 and followed 89 South into Arizona. Along the way... I met two men from a group called the Followers of the Apocalypse. Edward Sallow and Bill Calhoun. They came to teach the tribes. Calhoun was a good man. Edward was the one who got us into trouble down the road. Was one of those men Caesar? No, not then. Back then he was just Edward. Smart man. Young, but we all were. We thought we could hike into the Grand Canyon and talk to Blackfoots. We did, 
and the Blackfoots were friendly enough at first, but eventually... I've thought back to that day so many times. I must have mistranslated. Something must have been mixed up, because the Blackfoots decided we weren't going to leave. The rest is history, assuming Edward hasn't changed it. How did you end up as Caesar's legate? This way lies the path to hell. Ed... Caesar needed me to translate. Translation became giving orders. Giving orders became leading in battle. Leading in battle became training, punishing, terrorizing. A series of small mistakes before a great fall. And I stayed in that darkness until after Hoover Dam. After I failed Caesar and he had me burned alive, thrown into the Grand Canyon. This account is corroborated by Chief Hanlon. Chief Hanlon was the military leader of the NCR who was in charge of defeating Joshua Graham at the Battle of Hoover Dam. If it weren't for this man, Joshua Graham and the Legion would likely have been victorious. Chief Hanlon knew his enemy well, and if we ask him about it, he tells us the same story in his own words. Losing the dam was the worst defeat the Legion ever suffered. Graham had been with Caesar since the beginning, but he had to set an example. The Praetorians covered Graham in pitch, lit him on fire, and down into the Grand Canyon he went. You have to understand, Graham was the toughest son of a gun anyone around these parts had ever seen. Before Hoover, we had five kill reports on Graham from Rangers and first recon sharpshooters who tried to take him out. Some folks think he's still alive. Call him the Burned Man. Even among the NCR, Joshua Graham has become a legend. We can ask the man how he possibly survived being burned alive. I survived because the fire inside burned brighter than the fire around me. I fell down into that dark chasm. But the flame burned on and on. The next morning, I woke up and crawled out of the northern edge of the Grand Canyon, that cursed place. It took me three months to reach New Canaan. It was as though the prodigal son had returned. They welcomed me like I had never left, never done anything to shame them. The fire that had kept me alive was love. Their love. God's love. I will never be able to repay the debt I owe to them, but I must try. Are you in much pain? Is there anything I can do to help? You are kind to offer, but no. There's nothing you can do. We don't use chems. But I learned long ago that I'm immune to their effects. It never stops burning. My skin. Every day I have to unwind the bandages and replace them with fresh ones. Exposing my body to the air is like living through it again. But it's better to be clean than comfortable. Well, that's a bit of nasty luck, being immune to the effects of all chems. How is that even possible? Well, Joshua, based on your history, I'm sure you have some strong opinions about the war between Caesar's Legion and the NCR. I try not to involve myself with matters of the Mojave anymore. All I know is from before the Battle of Hoover Dam. All right, then. Well, what did you think about the NCR? Better than Caesar, but that's not a high standard. Too much love of money and ownership. Not enough love of God and giving. Any society that derives its power and authority from the will of man alone lives apart from God and will crumble in the end. Do you know about Mr. House? I had heard of him. But when we were preparing to enter the Mojave, he didn't seem relevant to what was happening. From what I've learned since Hoover Dam, he handled the Mojave tribes in a fashion not entirely dissimilar from Caesar. It's too bad. Well, I'm guessing after all this, you don't really like Caesar all that much. Love the sinner, hate the sin. With Caesar, it's often very difficult to see through all of that sin to the person inside. I can say that we were both lucky that NCR supply lines and land routes north of Mojave Outpost were destroyed before the Battle of Hoover Dam. Something bad happened near Death Valley at a place called the Divide. NCR couldn't cut across anymore, and it slowed down the reinforcements. Terrible storms ripped entire companies apart before they even got to Nevada soil. 
The aftermath of Hoover Dam could have been even worse for Caesar. What's the divide? I don't know for certain, and I don't think NCR knows either. Whatever happened at the divide was too much for them to handle. Our frumentari told us what they saw. Only fools and madmen would march into a place like that. All roads wind down to the same spot. The grave. They said all that's left there is a gaping wound cut into the earth, cursed and damned. No place for God-fearing folk. So the Divide blocked all of the NCR's northern land routes? Not all of them, but they couldn't take 127 North to get around the mountains. As if Death Valley weren't enough, they had the Divide and Big Empty to deal with. From what the Legion's explorers reported, the Big Empty may as well have been a wall to any living thing approaching it. In this conversation, Joshua Graham provides a bit of foreshadowing for two upcoming New Vegas DLCs, Lonesome Road and Old World Blues. We will learn more about the Divide and the Big Empty at a later date. Joshua Graham is a merchant, one of the two merchants found in the entire Zion National Park. From him, we can buy the DLC's new ammunition, 45 caliber ammunition, as well as some of the new DLC weapons. We can also repair our gear with Joshua. Let me have a look. My tribe may take too much pride in its mechanical talents, but in truth, we are intrigued by the workings of a fine firearm. His repair skill, as is to be expected, is 100, meaning we can get any gear item we want fully repaired. In his cave, we find a lot of scrap, however, it's all owned, so we can't take it without stealing. And we find a workbench and a reloading bench. But these are not exceptionally rare. We find these in many caves, and we'll learn why in an upcoming episode. But now we have been tasked with finding pre-war tools scattered around this national park that we can give to Daniel, the new Canaanite leader of the Soros tribe, which they can use in case they need to hastily abandon Zion. We will scavenge those tools and meet Daniel and his Soros tribe in an upcoming video. But for tomorrow's video, we need to get to know our brand new companion, Follows Chalk, a little bit better. At last, we have finally met and better understand Joshua Graham, a man who was once a great villain, but has become remorseful, who from all appearances has become a changed man. But has he really? Has he really changed? Or has he simply directed his violent tendencies towards a new enemy? The White Legs, people whom he says deserve it. Stay tuned for tomorrow's episode, ladies and gentlemen. This was part two of my series on Honest Hearts. Over the coming days, we will explore the entire story and uncover the true motives behind Joshua Graham. What are your thoughts so far? I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments section below. If you're enjoying this series so far and you'd like to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning with a brand new video.